So welcome back to a new GameStuff episode and got a few things to go through today. Some really interesting items. Stick around to the end. There's a few surprises. That is for sure. Like right over here. This is a bit of a surprise. To begin with, we have to start off with data discs and they create great vinyl records of incredible old school games. Some that I'm really a huge fan of. And this one is great. I put on my police knot shirt. For anybody who knows, I just picked this up from Redbubble. Everybody's always asking me where I get my shirts from. I don't have any secret sources. I just go to Redbubble because you can get really unique shirts there. You can, you know, have any design put on them. Or eBay is also another good one. I got my Resident Evil 2 shirt from there. Love that uh, as well. But I thought I'd don this shirt on today because of this has just arrived from Data Discs. Look at this. For anybody who doesn't know, this is the soundtrack for Police Knots. This was released by Konami in the 90s. And uh, Kojima, this is like the Kojima digital graphic novel that came after Snatcher. And I have the games over here. I had to cut there because they were a lot higher. I have the original game here. This is really great on the Sega Saturn. And somebody who watches the show sent me the translated version. I also have the PlayStation 1 translated version. That's how I originally played the game. Really, really great stuff about a cop who wakes up in the future and he's trying to find out about himself. He's trying to solve a crime. It's awesome. So I thought what we would do is have a look at this together. I'm really excited about putting this on in a little bit here. So what, the, the packaging is second to none here. So let us just have a look at the disc itself. Two discs, wow, look at these. Beautiful looking stuff. Really nice looking stuff. So we got two discs going on right here. Now we get into the packaging itself. So we have the cover here. Really nice, great old school artwork, front and back. Very much like the Lethal Weapon uh, duo. Uh, that's what they're really copying here. Oh my God. This is, okay, I'll just show this beautiful picture that comes with it. So nice. And you know, it's so cool to have the, the shirt as well. I'm really thrilled to have the shirt as well. Look at this little booklet here. Can you see? I'll put that, yeah, you can see that there. Oh my God. Look at this great old school artwork. I'll move over here so we can look at this together. Ah, oh, I miss, I miss artwork like this. I really do. And there was an art book. It's not really an art book. It's like an art book strategy guide that I would love to get for this uh, game. I'm really a super fan of the old 90s stuff. I think it's so great, so great. Oh, that's a classic shot. Isn't that great of them too there? That is awesome. I need that as a poster. I need that as a poster. So uh, really great stuff from Data Discs. I can't wait to listen to the soundtrack again. I'll be doing that in the other room in a little bit. Now, being a <laughs> An 80s Sega fan, how could I not get this? Space Harrier. Space Harrier. And again, we'll look at this together. I remember going to the arcades with the old sit down Space Harrier and just being blown away by the graphics at the time. And what a simpler time. I, isn't it funny to look at how we're impressed with graphics nowadays, what it takes to impress us, and what we were impressed at back in the 80s. And Space Harrier just blew my mind. And here's a beautiful green disc going on. That looks awesome. I just love that opening music when it goes, get ready. Here's a nice, some of the original artwork there. Look, look at the 80s. <laughs> the 80s was just so full of color. It was really an exciting time in the 80s. I had a really, really good time there. I, to be honest with you, I don't live in the past at all, but I gotta say, I'm so happy I grew up in the 80s. I really did. It was the start of so much in pop culture. G.I. Joe started, Transformers started. All of the amazing movies that you keep seeing sequels to now came out then and were completely original and completely amazing. And I wouldn't trade it for anything. That, that childhood growing up in the 80s was wonderful. So that is a lot of why I want things like Space Harrier. It really takes me back to that time. Now, I had somebody write to the business email and say that they wanted to send me a game and I was like, okay, I usually always say no. I, I'll be honest, I always say no to anybody. I don't, I don't wanna like get, uh, you know, have the audience send me presents 
You know what I mean? I don't, I, I just feel so bad getting them, but I was like, this person was very nice and they were kind of like a little bit persistent. I was like, okay, and his name was Paul. And I just want to say, thank you, Paul. He sent me uh, Fancy Star Nova on the Vita and uh, quite a few other Vita games going on here. A lot of these I've never played or anything like that. And it was just cool to get another Fancy Star game for the collection. I was like, okay, fine, you're twisting my arm. I'll go for that for sure. So I just want to say thank you to Paul for sending these. I feel really bad, but you know, very nice of you to do. So thank you so much. Now I got to cut in with this item right here. This, this is a mystery item. This is a mystery item because I don't know who sent it. And I don't know how it got here. I, I'm really serious. This package shows up one day at the house and it's got this on it. I'm like, what? What is this? It's like a, a slime going on. I'm like, what? So I open it up and this is, I have to show you this first of all. I, I was, let me say, it made me trip balls, man, because I open it up and I see this and then I see this Yuji Hori signature and I'm like, oh my God, did Yuji Hori send me something? But then I re realized that this is from England and I'm like, well, that's not possible. Then I realized this is like a photocopy of some original work that he did. Uh, he did a drawing years ago and I, he did this uh, signature years ago. So I opened this up and I, this is such a unique item, but I, I wish the person had left me a note and, and explained where, where this came, comes from and all this. It's from something like Etsy. I've never used Etsy or anything like that, but. So what this is, wait for it. This is a ceramic slime. This is a ceramic slime here. And the deal is that I guess Yuji Hori, the creator of Dragon Quest, did a drawing and then somebody recreated what his interpretation of a slime was. And this is from the original Japanese mold. I had to figure out all of this stuff. It was incredible. And there was a note, but I just, it just says, Johnny, slime for you, all the way from the shores of Britannia. Find it a place atop your tree or anywhere you want it to be seen. Your movie is a critical hit. Is your next movie going to be, thank, thanks for looking, the good looker. Um, so I want to say thank you. I really want to say thank you for sending this over. I really wish, I think there, there was a name I was able to kind of get. I think I, I got a name Mark. It's so hard to see all that there was scribbled on the side uh, of the packaging when it was sent. So I just want to say thank you so much. This is such a unique, unusual item. I don't know how you got my address. I say thank you so much for sending it over. I wish you sent me a little bit of a note so I could have really uh, thanked you a little bit more, but uh, I re really do appreciate that. Okay. Now, as you know, I always get into some anime movies that I bought and some anime books and stuff like that. And, you know, just stuff that I really like in general. As a lot of you know, one of my favorite animes of all time, it's an OVA. It was three OVAs. I think there's a new one coming out in Japan. I'm not really looking forward to that one. I don't really like the look of it so far. But I'm a huge fan of an old anime called Megazone. Love it. Parts one, two, not so much three. Definitely not four right now. Parts one and two are legendary. I grew up with them. 1989, I had the most amazing uh, time watching it. It changed my life. It did. It changed my perception of animation. And I'm, I'm just gonna be dead honest here. When I was a kid, I couldn't believe that there was such sex and violence in Megazone. Like people's eyeballs explode. There's full sex scenes. And as a young kid, I was amazing. I couldn't believe this was an anime in, in, in a cartoon. I was like, wow, what is this? So over the years, I've had many different versions of these. I've had VHS version. I had beta and then VHS. And then I finally got DVD years later. And that was a long time ago now. And there's never been an official Blu-ray released in this country that was in Japan. I've always been so jealous about it. And then I was going to import the Japanese version without subtitles or anything. And it was like, $350 and I was like, fuck that for three parts? No way. Anyways, I went down the rabbit hole one night on eBay. You know, I'm always searching. I'm always like typing in Megazone, seeing what shows up. 
and I saw this. I saw this. It's called Megazone 2-3 Blu-ray Archive Box 30th Anniversary Edition. And then it, for some unknown reason, it has like 30th Anniversary of Macross over there. I don't know why that's up there. I don't get that. But that's not the point. I was like, what is this? And I started to read the description on it. And it was fascinating. It said the Blu-rays, and this has been done in America by somebody, uh, that there's subtitles on it. The subtitles are good. These are not Hong Kong knockoffs. That was the big thing that I, that I read, that these are real high quality productions. So I took a gamble. I took a gamble. I thought, okay, well, I don't have Blu-rays of this. This is a reasonable price. And I, I ordered it and it arrived and I put it in and I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. It's incredible. And so I watched parts one, two, and three. I even watched three again. I still don't like three. Three is really bad. Parts one and two, it's, I'd never seen them in high definition before. I started watching them. I saw Megazone uh, two, three, the first part in 87. I saw like the books, I bought the books. And then in 89, I finally, 88, 89, I was able to finally watch the anime on beta. Uh, for the first time so I've, I've never seen it look so clean and it's so funny you can see so much dust i always want to say where was the fucking when they were doing the cells i, I know the, the the process of putting the cell down the, you know the old process and you know photographing it and then putting in the next cell get this sweeping brush and get rid of the dust there's so much dust on these old animes drives me crazy I wish I could have been there dusting for them. I'm like, I'll do it for free. <laughs> but um, really nice version of Megazone. And they also had this big box set for Macross. And they had like Macross, the TV show, um, 1982, Macross, the movie, uh, Macross Flashback, Macross 2, Macross 7, Macross 7, the movies, Macross Plus, all four parts, Macross plus the movie, Macros Frontier, Macros Frontier, all the movies, and then even Delta. Uh, Delta's a separate box set. But, oh, I know Macros Zero as well. All in this one box set, all in high def, done by the same person. So go check this out, and you'll go down the rabbit hole. The, he's even done uh, Evangelion, all of the parts uh, on Blu-ray, subtitled. These are really high quality productions. I was like, whoa! So this is just for me. I was really excited to get this. Okay, I was sticking with the anim anime for a second here. Another anime I saw in grade 12. It must, oh my god. My grade 12 when I graduated was 1993. That's how old I am. And I saw this really amazing anime called Robot Carnival. I got the VHS tape. I watched it so many times. And what Robot Carnival is, it's a collection of different stories, different robot stories told by different creators and different animators. So, I mean, even actually the guy who did Megazone 2, 3, Part 2, the character designs, he did character designs in one of these ones in here. I think it was called Presence. That's one of my favorite ones. And there's so the different robot stories done by Japan's greatest animators uh, and uh, storytellers. Oh, there's some really good stuff in here. There's some really good stories. I highly recommend this. You know, I bought it on Blu-ray because I want to watch it on Blu-ray again. I have the Laserdisc, and that's how I watched it for years afterwards. I would always watch the Laserdisc of this. I couldn't get enough of the English version. Uh, this is a big high recommendation for anime fans. You know, like, as I say, I'm not all, I'm not here promoting uh, buying Blu-ray, the, just buying the Blu-rays, go download it. I don't really care how you watch it. It's irrelevant to me. I've watched it in so many different styles of ways. Just go and check it out. I'm just recommending it as a really cool anime production uh, with some really great science fiction storyline elements in there. Uh, check it out. It's a bunch of different stories going on. Okay, we're going to stick to anime still. I keep brushing those off. I've been waiting for this since 1987. Honestly, I, I went to Hawaii with my parents and when I was there, there used to be this amazing night market. And back in 87, there used to be all this import stuff from Japan. And so my parents would take me uh, through this market and I saw robots and things I had never seen before. This is 87. And I was like, what is this? And I bought this little robot and it said Dunbine 
on it. And I was like, and it's kind of like an insect-like robot with a sword. I was like, and you could open up the, you know, the, the, the middle of it and you have a little pilot. I was like, this is the shit I love, right? I was really getting into mecha uh, robots then. Uh, and I just, I was falling in love with this stuff. And, and I brought this robot home and I, I never knew what it was from. And I eventually got an opening. I saw the opening of it in like 1989. And I must have watched that opening again and again and again and again. It was just the um, most amazing opening. And then I think I bought a DVD of the first one and it was so expensive. It was like $45 for like four episodes. I can't really remember, but it was so expensive. And I was like, I can't collect all of these. And I don't even think they finished the DVD set. I don't think I ever think they finished it. Where finally, 2018, in English, they finally released with subtitles, Dunbine, or Battle of Dunbine, a great old school anime. And it was crazy. I I put it on. Oh God, it must be uh, three weeks ago. I watched the first episode and I put it down and I was like, this is fucking ridiculous. In the very first episode, so many things happened, which they should have taken about, I think about four or five episodes to really do up, like really tell the story a little bit slower and nicer and let it sink in. It's this guy's on a motorcycle. He's transferred to this other world. All of a sudden he's piloting this mech with these three other earthlings and they're part of this huge political drama going on with all the, like all these different wars are happening within this world. And this is like halfway through the first episode. This is the first 15 minutes and I'm like, this is intense. This is fucking crazy. And there's something different about the storytelling back then to now. Back then, they're just like, yeah, these are, this is the way we're telling the story. This is what's happening. Just deal with it. This is it. And it's like, whoa. And it's like, it's really a little bit of overload. I, I had to really concentrate watching that first episode because so many characters are introduced. So much stuff is happening. And I'm like, what's, what's going on? It was really, it took me a little bit to sink in. It's, uh, it's interesting how things have been slowed down maybe a little bit now where I often think that we live in a time where things are sped up now, where stories are like da 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 da, where Dumbine, at least that first episode, and I'm gonna jump back in and watch it. I honestly put on the opening, my wife was getting so sick and tired of hearing the opening. I must have watched the opening 10 times in a row, just over and over, because you can go into the special features and just watch the opening with no no uh, subtitles on it or anything, just a, as they call it, a clean opening. Oh my God, and even the ending is just so, beautiful so i i recommend this for old school anime fans and maybe you didn't know this is coming out or that it was out another one i'm really looking forward to is zillion zillion we'll get into that i'll probably be in the next new game stuff episode i think it arrives in the next couple of weeks so looking forward to that immensely okay we're gonna finish off with some movies here and a movie i have never seen all the way through i've seen bits and bats and I bought it, oh god, I actually bought it a while ago. It's been sitting on the shelf, I wanted to show it. I've ne I, we're gonna watch it for Halloween. That's, that's what's gonna happen. A terrible E.T. ripoff from the 80s called Mac and Me. I got this, celebrating the 30th anniversary. That's just insane. And so for Halloween, me and Kim, oh my god, in the next few days we're gonna watch this. 100%, I've never, it's so terrible. It's so horrendous, every little clip I've ever seen I must watch this. I don't know. Do any of you guys have a fond memory of Mac and Me or you just hate the movie or you love to hate it? It's one of those style of movies. Here's an interesting one. This is, for 2018, is my one of my movies of the year. Really. But understand I, I really lean towards science fiction stories and original uh, concepts. I really like fresh ideas when I go to the movie theater. As much as I like superhero movies, it's always a formula. And I like, you know, I like to be a bit taken on a ride where I don't know where I'm going. And I used to get that in the 80s a lot. And this movie reminded me of an 80s movie, 100%. It's based on a novel series that I've never read. I don't know if I ever will. But I went to see this earlier in the year with Victor Lucas and we watched it and I was absolutely blown away by this movie, by the storyline, the effects. It's, the, it's really, it's the psychologicalness of it. And you go on this journey and it, it's open for interpretation, really, realistically, a, a lot of it. 
and I loved it. I mean, I get shivers now thinking about it, seriously. I, I thought this movie was such a, a breath of fresh air, and it really reminded me, as they say, as a, of an 80s movie. Natalie Portman did a great performance with uh, Oscar Isaac, and I think it's one of the most uh, underappreciated movies of the year. Um, I'm definitely plugging it here. You should just go and see it. It's on Netflix, you know. You got Netflix, go watch it. It's really cool, especially for Halloween. <laughs> but get, I'm not kidding you. Me and Kim watched it, because I watched it in the theater and we watched, and me and Kim watched it. Uh, I got the, this version here. And it's creepy. It's really, really, the, the music will get into your head for like two weeks and you won't be able to get it out. And you'll be walking down the road in here, dun, 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 you know, like that horrible, uh, like kind of like uh, synthesizer music. It's just so, so, it just takes you back to that movie. It's freaking. Okay, uh, just a couple of books and we're out of here for sure. This is an interesting one. I saw this online. I've always wanted to go to Evo so I could pick up this book. And this is a really unusual thing for a lot of people. It's called The Will to Keep Winning by Daigo Umahara. He is the great Street Fighter competitor. Uh, he hasn't done so well in the last few years, but I'm a big fan of his. I am always rooting for him and Justin Wong because they're the most prominent people in the Street Fighter uh, scene. And I really like them and I'm always rooting for him. The reason why I ordered this, I follow him on um, social media and he was selling a few of them hand signed. So this is really, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, why does it matter? Why do you care? I don't know. He encompasses a certain time period in the Evo, Evo scene, in the rise of Evo. And he did some incredible things. Remember that comeback he did in, in Third Strike? Unreal. What a legendary moment that was. And it's really nice to have his book, which is something I'm going to read. Because it's nice, it's small. This is the kind of thing that I can devour in a couple of nights. And I, I want to hear his story. And it's really about him, you know, overcoming a lot of things. And, you know, the, the will to keep on winning in Street Fighter. And I thought this was such a unique item. And definitely one that I, I will cherish for sure. Okay, th this is these are interesting items here. I I often mention it in my new game stuff episodes. There's a little bookstore up the road from me, and it's a it's a beautiful little bookstore, and they ha get the most unusual things in. And I will go through all of their books. I usually find a lot of really old school Dungeons and Dragons books, which I really like. And I found this book. This book was ten bucks. I couldn't believe it. I remember seeing this in a Japanese bookstore and I, they were selling it for 60 to $70 back in the day. One of my favorite artists, Mikimoto. I absolutely love this guy. For anybody who doesn't know, he does all of the artwork for Macross, all the original Macross, the one I like the most. Uh, you know, they've done a lot of Macrosses since, but it was always that. And he did this like, this is like some of his fantasy arts. And I just was like, oh my God, this is awesome. I, I, he is one of my favorite character designers of all time, of all time. He just knocks it out of the park. There's, there's a lot of good character artists. There certainly is, but none like him. He has a unique style that I absolutely adore. And I got this book for 10 bucks. I could, I, this was, this was honestly, I know it sounds cheesy to say, a bit of a dream come true. It's like one of those things that you weren't expecting to find and I'm like, I pull it out like the holy grail off the shelf. I'm like, you're kidding me. This book is here? Like, in his old bookstore? What? And uh, I was very happy to pick this. I picked this up actually in the summertime. Again, it's been on the shelf for a while. I just finally, finally got to it. Now, here's a nice little story as well is that there is a guy who lives in town and he's a uh, mutual friends with another friend of mine, Baruti, and he's a huge JRPG fan, huge. And we've only ever talked on Twitter and stuff like that. And we've never had a chance to talk uh, in real life, I, I, even though he lives in Vancouver and all that. So I said to him, I messaged him, uh, I, like I was giving away a bunch of t-shirts for the Dragon Quest giveaway that Square Enix had sent to me. And uh, I had a couple of extras. And he wrote to me, he said, oh my God, I'd love, I wish, do you have a, a size medium or something? And I'm like, so I wrote to him, I said, yeah, I, I do. And I said, I got a whole bunch of other stuff that I'd like to, to give to you. 
And he's like, what? Oh, really? I said, if you're in the neighborhood, drop on by. I'll meet you outside. And I got all this stuff to give you. So it was really cool. I had like one of the crowns from Nina Kuni and a steel book and uh, a t-shirt from Dragon Quest and some stickers from Dragon Quest, all that kind of stuff. So I just, you know, so I just, I, I just wanted to give this guy because I knew he's a big JRPG fan and I had all this stuff. So absolutely, I'll give it away. And so I met him and he was the nicest guy. His name was Steve. Really, really great guy. And he made me feel bad. I gave him all this stuff and I'm so happy to give him stuff. And he's like, here. And I'm like, dude, like what the hell is this? I mean, I was, I always, I always get mad. I know that sounds like such a weird reaction. I'm like, no, I want to give you stuff. I don't want you giving me stuff. And it's called Grand Blue Fantasy. It's a really interesting game series only in Japan. And I got to thank him so much because this artwork is insane. And we just sat outside talking forever just about JRPGs and their artwork and how amazing this artist was. And I, I just want to thank him again for giving me this book. I, I really appreciate it, especially being an artist. Uh, I don't draw anymore, but I, 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 I used to study this kind of work over and over. So I have a deep affection for hand-drawn uh, Japanese-style JRPG artwork like you wouldn't believe. It's, it's very, very deep, and uh, I just love the art in this book. Like, look at this stuff. Just amazing, just amazing. So we had a really good talk about Dragon Quest XI and all that great stuff. And uh, yeah, it's real, always really nice to meet and talk to other people that you have so much in common with. It's really, really nice. I wish I could meet a lot of you guys to sit down and have a coffee or a cup of tea with and just talk about all of this stuff, all of our passions for sure. And that's why I always want to show this stuff. It's showing my passions uh, for all these wonderful things in our hobby. And I know a lot of you guys share the same hobby and the same love for this stuff. And that's why I do these episodes 100%. So anyways, guys, until next time.